Tap strafing has to be the most controversial movement technique in Apex, and it's one of the most divisive topics between mouse and keyboard pros and controller casuals in all of Apex Legends. But why is that? Today we'll go over the entire story of tap strafing going back to where it started in Titanfall. Now don't worry about it, we're not going to go too in depth with Titanfall, but it is important to know the roots of the technique if you want to understand the whole picture. As you all may know, Titanfall is a movement shooter which Apex Legends is directly built on, both of which are using the Source engine. Titanfall has a sweaty community, just like Apex, both in something that's called pilot versus pilot games that have focus on aim and movement, and its possibilities with its movement also bred a vast speedrunning community. And on the 9th of October 2017, an advanced movement guide for Titanfall 2 featured movement techniques such as bunny hopping, side hopping, wall climbing, and a 90 degree jump, which allowed you to turn sharply 90 degrees mid-air. Sound familiar? And two years later, in June 2019, one of the gods of Titanfall movement, Bryonado, noticed that a speedrunner by the name of Regnels was saving a lot of time when turning corners. After some discussion, the term lurch and tap strafing were coined, and Titanfall movement changed forever. Following the discovery of lurching and tap strafes, a core part of the speedrunning community would explore the possibilities of tap strafing. There were lurches and lurch less movement techniques, and they allowed speedrunners to push the boundaries of Titanfall movement like never seen before. So what is Lurch? Lurch is a half of a second period of time, with the first 0.2 seconds of this period being more intense, after any and all jumps where directional inputs will push you in the direction that you pressed, meaning you can control yourself midair. As Apex is built directly on top of Titanfall, this was obviously grandfathered into the game. Lurching is a technique that was programmed specifically for mouse and keyboard use and cannot be emulated natively when using a controller. And this is a very important distinction because lurch is not tap strafing and knowing the difference is pivotal in understanding why. Despite all the controversies and false promises that we'll mention later, tap strafing still hasn't been removed from the game. Lurching at its core allows a mouse and keyboard user to have control of their movement and tap strafing is an abuse of the lurch mechanic whereby binding forward inputs to the scroll wheel, users can spam a countless amount of lurch inputs combined with side inputs at the same time, which allows them to turn midair seamlessly. Binding the scroll wheel to the forward input is a way to create a legal macro, which otherwise only would be replicable by third-party software, but more on that later. With tap strafing having this deep-rooted history from Titanfall, it was bound to be discovered by someone in Apex. And on August 27th, 2022, Moki Sniper, who you all might know as that movement guy, released this guide, showcasing the movement technique that would fundamentally change Apex Legends movement forever. This was followed by some other guides and clarifications in the following weeks as Moki discovered new uses and refined the technique, eventually releasing the tap strafing 2.0 video about two weeks later, showing just how much tap strafing would allow you to do. The community's response was overall positive, with comments like, imagine doing this as a mirage, the bamboozle potential is insane. If I saw this in a match, I'd assume you were cheating, with some users already noticing the unfairness commenting cries in controller player. But tap strafing was still in its infancy, with many players chalking it up as something niche, which doesn't have any real in-game use. In the meantime, some players continued to grind movement while refining their tap strafe usage, testing the limits, and eventually turning it closer to the fundamental movement technique that we see today. I was one of those people, and almost a year later, on the 10th of June 2021, I released this video. And I called tap strafing the forbidden technique because it sounded cool and in retrospect, I had no idea about the controversies that were about to come. In this video, I showcased how to tap strafe properly with a lot of visual examples and several camera angles, and I followed it up by showing many, if not all the known ways you could use tap strafing and chain it into several other movement techniques. I made a point of calling tap strafing one of the fundamentals to advanced movements, and of course asking Respawn not to remove it. This too came with some comments, again mostly supportive, with Moki Sniper chiming in about how far we've come to the same sad console noises we saw from Moki's own comment section. By the way, this isn't about me taking credit or anything, this guy was considered a steeple in how to pull off tap strafing at the time, and the video itself was popping off like nothing else. So let me have this, okay? Either way, 
In that year that followed, after this guide, an increasing amount of pros, streamers, and other high-level profiles started taking notice of the movement techniques. This spilled over into the typical Apex Legends highlight clips of your favorite streamers going viral, and soon enough the average console players started to wonder about this incredibly sharp movement that it seems that only PC players could pull off. This, combined with the Amos's debates that were sparked by the introduction of crossplay in Apex, all the way back in 2020, increased the divide between the competitive PC players and the casual console gamers. Controllers had been taking a lot of flack by the competitive community with the introduction of crossplay, and the console players spilling over into PC lobbies with their stronger aim assist made matters way worse. There were constant threads, clips, tweets, you name it, of streamers calling for nerfs or fixes to aim assist. And eventually, the casual started snapping back that if aim assist should be nerfed, so should tap strafing. Kind of ignoring how a sub percentage of PC players were tap strafing for a small movement advantage versus the very noticeable advantage aim assist gives for every single controller player, Moki Sniper thought the same and responded to the topic with this tweet. As the heat continued to rise with the constant bickering between mouse and keyboard and controller users, it eventually hit the boiling point where Respawn stepped in to announce that they're going to remove tap strafing in the upcoming 10.1 patch. They went to explain that it was going to be removed from Apex as it was inaccessible, lacks readability counterplay, and is exacerbated by movement abilities. This immediately blew up, with the entirety of the casual controllers all but dancing in the street, gloating about the announcement and the loss to PC players. Most streamers spoke out against the removal of tap strafe, and I even threw a take in there for good measure, and some movement streamers went so far as to say that if tap strafing were removed, they would quit Apex Legends. And it's Timmy, who needs no introduction, even chimed in with this quick bait post. But for perspective, on the flip side, Shroud added that he thinks the removal of tap strafing is a good thing. Moki Sniper, the person credited to bringing tap strafing to Apex Legends back in 2020, created a response video to the announcement, sharing his thoughts on the situation. And I'm going to save you having to watch the whole video, but in essence he said that tap strafing is getting a lot of negative press from console players complaining about being tap strafed on, when in reality they've probably never seen a tap strafe firsthand, and that it must have happened in a minuscule amount of cases. He amounted the negative press to all the viral clips showcasing what can be done with tap strafing, making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. In this video, Moki Sniper also added that Respawn doesn't have a good way to simply remove tap strafing, because if they remove the game's ability to stack lurches, it would ruin the feel of movement and many movement techniques in the process, such as momentum shifts, redirects, and many ways that wall jumps can be used. Some pro players, such as PvPX, the famous Twitter complainer, chimed in with the suggestion that instead of removing tap strafing, Respawn should just look into removing scroll strafing, as it is very easy to simply bind your scroll wheel to the forward input to get the macro effect. But the result of doing this would just lead to players using third-party macros to tap strafe, so you'd end up with the same result at the end of the day. With the announcement of tap strafing being removed, John Larson, a game designer at Respawn, gave his thoughts on tap strafing in a tweet longer. Amongst other things, John actually addressed the controller versus mouse and keyboard debate head on, stating that he believes, despite popular belief, controller players with prowlers weren't beating mouse and keyboard players at what he called a crazy rate. He continued with addressing how using aim assist as a balancing difficulty layer is a bad thing, as accessibility is a layer above balancing and should not be touched for balance. He also added that he believes that if players start switching to another input type out of necessity, he would start being very concerned. That did not age well. Basically, he defended controller in its state in 2021 and explained how you couldn't just remove aim assist and tap strafing at the same time to make things fair they're not comparable. At the end of the blog post, John Larson added that they've been discussing the tap strafing manner internally, and that they even brought in their best mouse and keyboard players as well as some pros to ensure that other movement techniques weren't caught in the crossfire. But as the 10.1 patch hit, there was no mention of tap strafing being removed in the patch notes. Better yet, there was no change to tap strafing at all, and everyone wondered, did Respawn fail to remove it? After radio silence on the manor and lots of tweets and comments from both sides, Respawn broke the silence with this tweet, stating that they had discovered some unexpected side effects of their planned changes to tap strafing and that they're delaying the planned change to a later patch. But as the months went by, something changed. Sure, the discussion more or less looked the same, with the casual community constantly harping on about how it was going to be removed, but on January 22nd in 2022, in an interview, John Larson himself clarified that they're no longer looking to flat out remove tap strafing, 
but to tune it instead. As with every update in the saga, this sparked another outrage, but things eventually simmered down. Until February 4th the same year, where to tease and build hype around the new and exciting control game mode, Respawn had invited top streamers to playtest it, including ACU, Lulu Lovely, and It's Timmy. When trying to tap strafe, It's Timmy made a note of how it didn't let him tap strafe over 90 degrees, and of course, this clip went viral. Wait, tap strafe? What do you mean? <gasps> I can't tap strafe? Oh my god, what happened to me? As we all know, this sparked another debate, and the community thought that maybe Respawn had figured out a way to finally remove tap strafing without impacting the game. The community blew up, revitalizing the song and dance about tap strafing that had been going on for over a year now, but on patch day, just a few days later, lo and behold, tap strafing was still in the game. And nobody knew why. But as somebody who has deeply been involving himself with all of Apex's dramatic changes, it's possible that Respawn either accidentally let this change hit the demo client that the streamers were playing on, or intentionally left the change in to gauge the public's reaction. And this was certainly suspected to be the case when with the release of Season 14 on August 9th later that year, users would go into the game to find out that tap strafing was removed, blowing up Twitter with responses just like with the control situation, because just like with the control situation, there were no mentions of tap strafing anywhere in the patch notes. And a few hours after the usual flame war tweeted out that they heard the reports of issues with tap strafing and that they were looking into it. Moki Sniper actually went in depth and explained his theory as to why tap strafing magically no longer worked, citing that the previous nerf that was introduced with the control mode a few months back actually was put in place, it just was turned off and that Respawn may have accidentally turned the nerf on when they weren't supposed to. And that's pretty likely, because it only took a few hours until the issue was fixed, and users could tap strafe again. And tap strafing hasn't shown any signs of being removed anytime soon. We have actually seen the rise of a new generation of movement streamers using this technique among others, such as Lemonhead or Treery, and we've even seen controller players starting to use macros and configs, to gain tap strafing on their own and close the gap between controller and mouse and keyboard movement, most notably with the new Rising Star Ecstasy. And as of the time of this recording, tap strafing continues to remain in the game, and despite its troubled past, might not ever be removed. As such, tap strafing will remain Respawn's biggest problem. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like, subscribe, check out the video on the screen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.